If you're ready to explore the Hebrew roots of your Christian faith, then grab your Bible and let's get started. Welcome to Reconcile Out the Kina. We're working towards becoming a harmony of the whole word of truth. My name is Patrice Robinson and I appreciate you stopping by here on today. A recap from last week. Last week we covered the sixth, the seventh days. I believe we covered enough information that will help you do a more in-depth study. We focus on what we call today dinosaurs, um, humankind, and the seventh day. I encourage you to watch the playlist to catch up with us if you have not seen that video. I hope you have your Bibles in front of you because we're going to jump right on in. We are now in Genesis chapter 2 verses 4 through 9 and I'm going to go ahead and read. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that Jehovah Elohim made the earth in the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew for Jehovah Elohim has not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And Jehovah Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And Jehovah Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made Jehovah Elohim to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, there's a lot going on in these four verses. So like last week, just stay with me and I will try to give some little foundation to it so you can take it to a for the depth study for yourself. This account of the heavens and the earth, although we covered all seven days of creation from chapter 1 to chapter 2 to verse 3. However, we're given more details about what happened during creation. Most people from this chapter become confused and believe that Jehovah is still creating, that he's still in the creation process. Although we read in verse 3 of the same chapter that he completed his work and rested. Jehovah always give us additional information about generations after he talks about people and things like that. So I'm going to give you an example of that. So right now we are in chapter two. We did um, chapter one and it's not till chapter five of Genesis verse one that you get these words. This is the book of generation of Adam. On that day when Elohim created man, he made him in the likeness of Elohim. He created them male and female and he blessed them and named them mankind, humankind kind on the day when they created. It's not till we get to Genesis again, just chapter 5, 1, that we get that generational information. And I also wrote down here that you find that in Genesis 6, 9, 10, 1, 11, 10, and so forth, after they talk about the story of that person. Then we have Jehovah name the very first time. I dedicated an entire video called Jehovah versus God because I was taught that his name was God. As you will do your research, you will find out his name is Jehovah. And then you will figure out some people say that his name is so holy that we're not supposed to speak it. And there is no scripture in the Bible at all that Jehovah himself said not to call on his name. And I will leave that link to that video, Jehovah versus God, in the description box for you. And that would be your guide to do your studies. Before the planets and the herbs was on the ground, it did not rain. Matter of fact, even after he put the the grass and the plants and all that down, mist came up from the water to the face of the ground. Now, it does not rain in the Bible. We don't see any rain come along until the days of Noah. And many try to explain this, you know, how can it be that it doesn't rain until then? Of course, we know that Earth's atmosphere and environment was most definitely different than what it is today. But they ask, how do we get the rivers and the other bodies of the water? The Bible is 
explain how we have rivers. Jehovah created them. He created the rivers. Man is created from the dust of the ground. Their life was breathed into his nostrils of mankind, humankind, and then he became the image of Elohim. He breathed breath into the nostrils of mankind. He did not breathe into the animals, but they have breath. The difference between the beast and the animal kingdom life versus the human life is that human now, humankind, mankind, since Jehovah breathed into his lot, into his nostril and given him a living soul, that soul does not die. But that was make us different from animals. They don't have a living soul. So Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 21 says this, who knoweth the spirit? spirit of man that goeth upward and the spirit of a beast that goeth downward to the earth. The beast has appetites, emotions, mind, desire, just like humankind, which are, we ourselves um, can be just like beasts at times. However, we are created with a living soul that does not die. We have two places that we will go on our final days. So some will go to the new heaven and the new earth when that time comes. And then some will end up in the lake of fire with Satan and his followers. Like Daniel said in chapter 12, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. That is the difference in the humankind and the animal kingdom. The beast will not be standing and going through judgment. Humankind will be going through judgment. What I want people to keep in mind, what we addressed last week, and I hope you still have it in your mind, that mankind, humankind, male and female, was created on day number six. So keep that in mind as we continue on reading. The garden was planted in the eastward and he put man in, in Eden and he gave man a place to live. He explained out of the ground the trees which were pleasant to see or pleasant to see and for food. When was the garden of Eden created? When was the tree of life created? How about the tree of knowledge and good and evil? When was all this created? On day three. And Elohim said, let the herb bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after its kind and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And Elohim saw that this was good. And the evening and morning was the third day. This is Genesis 1, 11 to 13. So like I said, when people get into Genesis chapter 2, at the verse 3, when Jehovah is sharing additional information that occurred in creation, people think he's still creating. The genealogy of the heaven and earth does not change the day he created all things. Again, this chapter is just providing us additional information to see the big picture of things besides the order of creation. Provide us with the information of what is happening during creation. Genesis chapter 2 verses 10 through 17. And the river ran out of Eden to water the garden and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pishon, that it is which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of the land is good. There is bedellium and the oxen stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. It's the same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hidekel. That is it, which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And Jehovah Elohim took the man and he put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So he gave them, he gave them their assignment. And Jehovah Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of the tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest 
thereof thou shall surely die. First, we have these four rivers that's flowing in the places that haven't even been in development yet. So that is prophetic in itself, that we are going to have Ethiopia, that we are going to have Assyria and have all, and, and all these other places will be in development. So even in Genesis chapter 2, we see prophetic information. The tree of knowledge of good and evil was placed to test humankind. I'm going to try not to jump so far ahead of myself, but Jehovah was more than able, capable to give them all the knowledge that they needed. They were handed every tree to eat, but this one tree they was not supposed to eat off of. So it's like giving your children or, or giving someone, I should say, you have 10 cars and you give them keys to all nine except for the one car. That means they have different cars to drive, but this one car they cannot touch. How many of us human beings would be like, why didn't I get the key to the 10th car? Because we have a tendency to look farther into things that we don't need to look farther into or, or feel like we're missing out on something. There's more that I should be gaining and, and I should have. As we will find out when it comes to the Adam family, Mrs. and Mr. Adam, I got that from another uh, uh, minister who actually pointed that out um, to me. Mrs. and Mr. Adam was not thinking of this tree until they had a visitor. Why they wouldn't think about this tree, my assumption is because Jehovah was visiting, his spirit was visiting and communing with them for time. Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. 18 through, 18 through 25. And Jehovah Elohim said, It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. And out of the ground, Jehovah Elohim formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he will call them. Whatsoever Adam called every living creature that was the name thereof. And this is how we got the understanding about what we call dinosaurs today and what they were called in the Bible. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every Every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help mate for him. So all the beasts, all the fowls, all the creatures, all the, the animals in the animal kingdom had meats with them. But Adam was by himself. Remember the fowls, the birds of the air was created on the fifth day. And on the sixth day was the beasts in the field along with the Adam family. Verse 21, and Jehovah Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in instead thereof and the rib which Jehovah Elohim had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. When was the woman created. Day six. We're going to read this. Genesis 1, 27 through 28. So Elohim created man in his own image. In the image of Elohim created he, him, male and female created in them. And Elohim blessed them and Elohim said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth on the earth. I remember and when I was in the Christian arena, so a teacher was teaching that man and female was created in one body. And then in Genesis chapter 2, they were split apart. But that is not correct because here in Genesis chapter 1, he already told them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue and have dominion over the fish and over the sea and over the fowl of the air and every living thing that move up on the earth. So they were already separated and knowing that they will be coming together to multiply the earth. Not only did he create them, male and female, on the sixth day, he gave them both dominion mean over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and every living thing that moveth upon the earth, they both 
were rulers. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. So he gave her the name woman, just like he named all the other animals and creatures and things like that. So he identified, he gave everything a name. Everything was presented to him to name because she was taken out of man. He named her woman, a part of man. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they both were naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So you have two beings in the very beginning who was created together, same day, sixth day, probably doing different times on the sixth day because he was naming out animals and then Jehovah was like looked it down and said he's by himself so I give him a partner so they work together they be fruitful and they multiply they both were naked and knew they were naked they were not ashamed at all so I'm not going to jump ahead I'm going to slow myself down before I give more information that I want to give at a later time they both were fully aware that they were naked and had no problem with this they were aware they were going to become parents and rule the kingdom they also knew that they were married no ceremony but the Bible points out man and his wife as partners who rule the animal kingdom if you enjoyed this Bible content hit that subscribe button comment and share this video as way of you showing your support join me on Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m. as we are continuing our journey through what Yeshua had taught. And I will see you next Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Have a blessed rest of the week and I encourage you to keep studying. Thank you.